Welcome back to the Eric Crown Crypto Channel. Wishing you a happy Nothing Start to Slice Tuesday CPI Day. It's time to bend over and get ready to get your cheeks clapped because CPI prints are coming in and who knows what the hell they're going to say. So at the end of the day, it is one of those uh, one of those times where I'd really uh, I'd really just be throwing most technical analysis, most analysis just in general to the side and let uh, and let let the chips kind of fall where they may. But I did want to come at this analysis with a few other um, yeah a, a few other hopefully unique unique pieces of data and statistics that uh, that can possibly be of interest and other than that it's valentine's day so have a happy valentine's day in your life elsa's very excited because i just informed her that we get to party with ali al at the end of this uh at the, at the end of this month, which uh, which we're all actually very, very excited for. Um, so cool. Let's jump into it right on over here. I want to start this uh, this analysis off with maybe not the most important thing of the day, but what I think is maybe the most unique thing of the day. So this is uh, this is going to be a setup that um, that we've actually spoken about on this channel maybe four or five months ago with the Jewel Light. And the setup is essentially this. When the Jewel Light goes below 35 and then turns white on the first tick, as you can see right here, alongside a daily uptrend well we can use uh trading views built-in uh, strategy tester over here and we can see um we can see the results that uh, that have been present since about 2019 is where this uh, is, is where this testing period goes back towards so again needs to be below 35 first tick turn white daily uptrend when that is present, uh, these statistics have been uh, ha have been available, um, with the biggest focus on the percent profitable right here, an 83 spot, 33 percent strike rate. Now, big counterpoint: 18 18 iterations, not that much, not that much at all. Also, before before uh, anything crazy gets said, uh, the net profit and max drawdowns and average trade; these are being based off of um, an account size, or not an account size, but a uh, an average trade size, not an average trade size, but literally a trade size of about three hundred thousand um, bucks. So, uh, so that's it's it's not going to be relevant in these terms. I mean, if you if you were trading this strategy over the you know since twenty nineteen with three hundred thousand base, then yeah, these would be relevant towards you. But that's it's not it's not how it's presented right here. Profit factor is what I'm most interested in for um, a, a little over four, which is really fucking good. Um, and ultimately, that can give us an insight as to one, uh, the probability of an upside move, two, uh, where it's potentially likely to go, and three, I can even I can even do a regression on this um, if we were to get rid of the daily uptrend condition, as that's probably going to make these uh, results a lot less um, interesting. So if I take that off, I uh, just want to show um, the percent profitable goes down significantly, the total amount of closed trades goes up significantly, but as you can see, uh, these are much less um, less interesting uh, stats. So I uh, just wanted to quickly showcase as well that uh, a lot of the time, you know, just trading with the daily trend or, or trading with a, uh, with a trend that's a little bit higher of a time frame than the one that you're currently using, gonna account for massively better results. So in this case, um, you know, if we do play around with the numbers here and the setup does work out to the upside, then we're probably looking at a, you know, somewhere between like a five to 7% move to the upside, which would put Bitcoin in the upper 22s, um, which would actually be a significant uh, movement here as we're gonna go over a little bit later. Um, but again, you know, 18 iterations, that does, you know, it, it could be a lot better. Um, I don't really trust it that much within this case, although the current uh, the current results are, you know, pretty damn good. Um, what else? What else should I be speaking about right here? Well, yeah, um, if, it, if it does fail, if it does fail, that's where we can start to look at our other charts um, to kind of get areas of interest for. In this case, I want to once again follow up on the daily chart over here. This is the daily setup of volatility versus stochastic momentum. Basically, it is this, and it also provides the potential for a trap, as we've been saying, because Bitcoin has failed to see continuation to the downside since we started speaking about this for the last uh, three to four days now. So, um, so here's the thing. Daily volatility represented by the BBWP indicator right here, getting down to, down below uh, 10 percentile, um, which I consider extreme, um, and then expanding from that extreme, coupled with the direction of the stochastic oscillator, which was right here, um, has led to a high probability move in that direction. Now, we've already seen this one happen, uh, or at least most of this move likely already happened. You see expansion right here from extreme low. And you see downside right here, which, you know, thus far we've seen from from top to bottom, uh, just under a 12% move. 
Um, and from the setup given to where we are right now is day number eight, meaning that tomorrow will be day number nine. Keep these numbers in the back of your mind's eye because when we go over here and reference the data for this particular setup, which, yeah, here we go. Here is the one day uh, short setup. We can see that um, this has had about a 70% strike rate. Obviously, that's going to go up because this one has worked out in the downside fashion. But more importantly right now is the average amount of days we expect it to take on the winning side would be about 11, uh, just over 11 days. Um, so in this case, when we go back and reference the data over here, you know, coming into tomorrow, if we don't see continuation to the downside, the probabilities are going to start to, you know, favor a bit of a trap move. Um, in this case, uh, until then, I want to be extremely, extremely clear, just like the last few days, until these conditions are met, the next few ones that I'm going to go over alongside, well, the last one, uh, risk remains to the downside and these stats are still relevant. Um, now, the average return from this particular setup has been about 20%. Uh, now, I do think that this one is probably going to be a weaker one simply because the volatility did not experience like a, a prolonged compression phase uh, below the extreme levels. So, you know, usually that's not going to be like a humongous move. So probably going to be closer to the bottom side of the first standard deviation, which gives us a range of interest between about 12.5% all the way up to 20%. And as we already know, um, we've already seen about a 12% move, um, very, very close to it. Um, so it would be within the conscious of that data. And the longer that Bitcoin goes sideways here, again, another day or two, um, or, you know, e even just another day, I mean, it's going to look a lot more like Bitcoin setting up for a bear trap here rather than not. Now, bear trap gets confirmed back above about 22,300. And also, the other thing I wanted to go over, uh, well, is we should talk about the other areas of interest. Like, let's say it's a 15% move, just to kind of show how nasty this can get very, very quickly. That would put Bitcoin at about 20,500. That's actually where the last CME gap is as well. And if it goes for the full 20%, that would put Bitcoin at the mid-19s. Um, also of interest right here is that the daily stochastic oscillator is still positioned to the downside. And again, as long as that condition is met, risk remains to the downside as well. But the current stochastic pivot is at 21700 for today's daily closure. So that would imply that Bitcoin basically doesn't see continuation of the downside today. You're going to see this cross the upside. This particular setup over here is, you know, that's it's done. It was about 12% move. You know, it was, it was a weaker one as we would expect from a uh, setup like this. And we get ready for the next thing. And the probabilities of a bear trap uh, get increased um, significantly from this region if that condition is met. So we've been slowly seeing this one develop over the past uh, three to four days now. This is just kind of follow through with that. Um, if we were to go into the lower term time frames, or at least lower term time frames, respectively speaking, over here, respectively, that's right, um, then, uh, then we could see on the four hour time frame, HPDR indicator, range highs and range lows. Um, if we do see a short term move to the downside, we're probably looking somewhere, that is not a good line, <laughs> somewhere around this line, below that line, it will be lights out. Um, continuation, you know, on lower term time frames, confirmed below about 21.6 or so. Um, and at that point, yeah, probably looking at a move back down around about 21.1, uh, probably an attempt for a bounce there. And I would probably assume that that bounce is going to fail and you're probably going to see into the mid uh, 20s and fulfill the CME gap, as we can see over here. Uh, but going back to this one, whoopsies, um, we can also see to the upside where I'm kind of getting the trap confirmation area from, which would be still the same thing as before, 22,300. So on a day like today, I mean, it's not out of the question to see like a spike down here or a spike up here and then run the other way. So until you really do see closures above or below this, uh, you know, these regions, um, you know, I, I really wouldn't be calling uh, anything of significant note. Um, I'd just be looking at this as, you know, likely a range play and uh, and and a bear trap confirmed back above 22.3 with, you know, likely move up to the to the low 23s after, uh, you know, after that, um, uh, you know, basically the prior range highs somewhere around there would be fair game. And at that point, have to consider the probability of a uh, of like a, a major bear trap. Um, but other than that, I think that's a good place for me to be leaving off on this particular video. I just want to make sure that you. OK, yeah, this was visible over here. OK, that's that's good. <laughs> like completely forgot to check. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah. Good place for me to shill the old Bybit. Bybit, a great place to get wrecked on. They got 0% on maker fees for derivative contract orders with the link in the description below for 30 days upon signing. Um, and then I'd like to wish you the best, the best. As always, take care, much love, and see you hopefully soon.